This video was sponsored by absolutely no one. Okay, so quick question and then we'll get right into it. What do a hyena, a bat, and a giant anteater all have in common? And no, it's not just that they're all mammals. It's that not only do all three have the ability to swim, they're pretty good at it. Giant anteaters are waterproof feather dusters that have been seen crossing rivers. Hyenas have been seen holding their breath and diving to feed on carcasses decomposing at the bottom of watering holes, and I cannot believe that it's a factual sentence. Even bats are able to phelps their way across small bodies of water, because apparently being able to fly for free just wasn't enough. But the truth is, this really shouldn't be surprising, because almost any mammal you can think of can probably swim and swim well. Pigs? Yeah, they can swim. Horses? Indubitably so. What about moose? They'll easily dive 20 feet to feed on aquatic plants and will even swim through inlets or between islands as they go grocery shopping, which can ironically get them put on Big Willie's meal prep. Even sloths have no issue in the water. In fact, they move three times faster in water than they do on land, which I guess isn't really saying that much because any number that close to zero times three still isn't that impressive. But because sloths can slow their heart rate, this moss blanket can actually hold its breath longer than dolphins, being able to go up to 40 minutes without air. A party trick they probably got from their long lost aquatic cousins, whose contracts got terminated about 4 million years ago. But realistically, it shouldn't be a shock that this many animals can swim. More than 70% of the world is water. And life is already too hard for you to get folded by a liquid, which is why most if not all mammals have a special feature known as a mammalian diving reflex. It's a built-in feature that lets you maximize your time underwater by prioritizing oxygen to the heart and the brain. And one of the ways the body does this is by lowering the heart rate as well as constricting blood vessels in the extremities, you know, the arms, legs, hands, and feet. MDR is like a pre-downloaded app that every person's born with, and it's often triggered by submerging the face in water. You can even trigger it in the shower. If you're one of those people that takes cold showers, first of all, let me tell you, you're not impressing anybody. Turn up the heat and enjoy life. Stop punishing yourself. But once the cold water or the shower hits your face, your heart rate will slow down and oxygen will start getting funneled to the most important parts of the body. You might even find yourself instinctively taking deeper breaths even though you're not underwater. Nah, but seriously, abolish cold showers. I used to be one of y'all and I can tell you you're not better than anyone. This mammalian diving reflex is why this may look like an extremely unethically late-term abortion, but it's actually a great way to teach your baby how to swim and how to not become a news article should they ever fall into water unsupervised. Except I think it only works with babies. Someone tried it with 8th grade me and my soul nearly filed for divorce. Of course, there are limits to what we can do underwater. Like, have you ever wondered why you've never seen someone try diving with a 30-foot snorkel? It's because even at only a couple feet deep, the water pressure is so strong that your lungs wouldn't be able to expand enough to take in air from the surface. Which would basically mean drowning yourself with extra steps. Unless you're an elephant. Because not only do elephants flex a 7 foot flesh snorkel, they also have a bunch of connective tissue in their chest that protects their lungs from the surrounding water pressure. It also helps that elephants are the only mammals without a plural space. So when it comes to snorkeling, water pressure is a relevant if you're an elephant. And it also means not only can elephants swim, they can do so for hours and cover several miles. In fact, when a circus ship sunk off the east coast of the United States, one of the few animals to not get written out the census was an elephant. And the heaviest thing on a planet with legs is more than capable of doggy paddling for hours, especially when motivated by food. Which is why once every few years, a video will go viral of people running into an elephant in the ocean where they honestly have no business. Making it one of the weirdest things you could possibly ever see at sea. I say one of because a 7 foot sand donkey with a backpack of fat definitely takes gold. Camels have been spotted miles removed from land out in the ocean. Which means two things. One is that the first person to ever see this 100% put his therapist on Forbes. Number two is that there's at least one shark in the world that knows that camels exist, and that's a crossover that I don't think a lot of people are ready for. There's a subspecies of the one-humped dromedaries called Karai camels, and they've allegedly crossed stretches of sea up to six miles long. And since fat floats and a camel's hump is full of fat, not water, I don't know where that started. Camels basically have a built-in life jacket that helps keep them afloat. Which is how these ships of the desert can swim over to islands where they can graze on mangroves. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, camels might be gods here. The point is that most mammals are able to swim with very few exceptions. That doesn't include lions, by the way. I just think this video is funny. Technically, giraffes can swim. They're just not very good at it. And there have been documented cases of giraffes getting too confident and drowning. But then again, when you can make eye contact with a third floor, asking to swim on top of that is just being greedy. And while Asian rhinos are pretty strong swimmers, their African cousins struggle and can find themselves in trouble if the water gets too deep. Great apes also can't naturally swim. And since they have relatively low body fat, they'd sink in deep waters almost instantly. But that doesn't mean monkeys can't. In fact, the whole reason Florida now has a herpes monkey problem is because in the 1930s, monkeys were brought to an island in a state park. Only for those monkeys to immediately swim to the mainland and start multiplying without a calculator. Someone lost their job that day. So yeah, the list of mammals that can't swim is short, and those that can't usually avoid deep water for obvious reasons. Except bulldogs, they seem to have a death wish that neither science or logic is able to comprehend. But there is one mammal that was able to finesse the entire system. 
Because hippos can't actually swim, and like the more you look at it, the more ridiculous it is. Hippos are actually the closest relatives of whales and dolphins, and they share a common ancestor from about 55 million years ago. They're cousins with animals that swim full time, but somehow they got a pass. Not to mention the land whale's full government name, the hippopotamus, is actually based on a Greek word that translates to river horse. River, as in water. Hippos spend 16 hours a day in water. They're born and give birth in water. And hippos even fall asleep underwater. They have a reflex similar to whales that lets them surface, take a breath, and sink back down without waking up once. The river horse literally leaves half its personality in the water, yet somehow can't swim. It's almost like they do it out of spite. And that's because if hippos are one thing, it's a middle finger to the natural order. You ever go through a bulking phase at the gym where you wear baggy clothes to hide your true potential to the world? I've been doing it for years. If you didn't follow me on Instagram, you probably think I'm skinny. That's a hippo's entire flow, because they're actually walking tanks. For all their size, the hippo's subcutaneous fat layer is actually incredibly thin. Under that is thousands of pounds of disrespect in the form of pure rippling muscle. Basically, hippos are all-terrain steroids. Fat floats, but this plus-size water pig doesn't identify as fat, it identifies as an absolute unit. So while elephants can go freestyling in the ocean, a hippo would get airdropped to Spongebob. So instead of actually swimming, hippos will instead walk underwater, and they'll push off the bottom when they want to surface. Some of you might argue that this is swimming stupid, and my response, words hurt, chill out. Put it this way, if I went to a pool and just walked along the pool floor, it'd be a stretch to call it swimming, more like struggling. But hippos don't struggle, and one of the reasons is because they have dense osteochlorotic bones in their legs. So heavy that they might as well be wearing Tim's. But they also have lighter bone material in their bone cavities, which gives them an almost neutral buoyancy in the water. They're so dense that they can just vibe underwater without actually spending any extra energy keeping themselves there. But the lighter bones also means it isn't impossible for them to surface when they do need air. See what I mean when I say they finesse the system? They're so physically incapable of swimming that it actually makes them great swimmers. They fail successfully at swimming. And because they don't have to actively hold themselves down, this up to 4,000 pound homicidal water cow can seemingly fly underwater. Pretty much, hippos are to water what goats are to gravity. Which would be cute, but then you remember that means every video you've ever seen of a hippo chasing a boat was literally sprinting full send underwater. And yeah, that makes it worse. I can't tell you what color his pants are, but they just got a brown paint job. The fact that hippos actively gatekeep watering holes when they themselves can't actually swim is just another league of dickery. It takes the world's biggest temper tantrum to humble them. Moral of this video, Jesus walked on water, hippos walked under it out of spite. But that's gonna do it for this video. For more consistent content, be sure to follow my Instagram and TikTok, both are gonna be in the description. Also, if you wanna support me on Patreon and gain access to exclusive content, not that kind of exclusive, this ain't OnlyFans. The link's also gonna be down below. Also, if you haven't heard, I have a new book coming out in July that is available for pre-order, along with an audiobook on the off chance that you're not sick of hearing my voice by now. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> He's a good girl.